Hello, everybody. Happy Good Friday to you. It's April the 10th, another beautiful morning the Lord's given us. God is so good, and uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful day that we celebrate. Uh, good Friday. I have a devotional here for you. The devotional is called The Good Shepherd. John 10 and 11, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. One of the figures of speech Jesus applied to himself was that of the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. John 10, 11 through 14. Note four things about Jesus, the good shepherd. He owns the sheep. They belong to him. Next, he guards the sheep. He never abandons them when danger approaches. Also, he knows the sheep. He calls them by name and they follow him. And then finally, he lays down his life for the sheep. Their salvation is his primary concern. The Bible says we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100 verse 3. Because we belong to Christ, we can be secure and at rest. We're not simply a mass of faces to God. He knows each of his children intimately and individually. He loves each of us so much that he would leave the 99 to run to your side if necessary. Luke 15 and 4. And I thought that was awesome about the Good Shepherd. And this is Good Friday. Uh, this is Good Friday, day number six, as we walk along with Jesus on the last week of his life here on earth. I have several verses here that we're referencing today. And of course, this is one of the busiest days of this week, as we know that Jesus' life came to an end here uh, on this earth. But hallelujah, as the old saying goes, it's Friday, but Sundays are coming. Praise the Lord. Early on Friday morning, Jesus was questioned again, and he affirmed that he was the Son of God, Luke 22 and 66. Jesus was taken from Caiaphas' house to the palace of Pilate, the Roman governor. Finding no cause to charge Jesus with a crime, Pilate tried to release him, Luke 23 and 4, but the Jewish people demanded that Jesus be crucified. Pilate sent Jesus to Herod, who ridiculed and mocked Jesus before sending him back to Pilate. Pilate brought Jesus out of the palace before the crowd of people, beaten, wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Jesus was sentenced to be crucified, John 18, 14. Carrying the beam of his own cross until Simon of Cyrene was enlisted to help, Jesus was led through the streets of Jerusalem as people jeered and shouted at him. Reaching Golgotha, which means the place of the skull in Aramaic, Jesus was nailed to a wooden cross, Mark fifteen twenty one. The soldiers cast lots for Jesus' clothing, Matthew twenty seven thirty five, and a sign reading, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, was placed above him. Jesus spoke to the thieves who were crucified on either side of him, promising to the one who expressed faith, Today you will be with me in paradise, Luke 23 and 40. Several women stood near the cross. Jesus asked his disciple John to take his mother Mary into his home and to care for her, John 19, 25. Darkness covered Jerusalem from noon until 3 p.m., Mark 15, 33. Around 3 p.m., Jesus said that he was thirsty and was given vinegar, John 19, 28. Before crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. Knowing scripture had been fulfilled, Jesus said, it is finished, John nineteen twenty eight. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the earth quaked and the curtain of the temple was split in two, Matthew 27, 51. Because Sabbath, that's the sunset, starting sunset on Friday evening, was quickly approaching, Pilate ordered Jesus' legs to be broken because the Jewish leaders did not want Jesus left on the cross. The soldiers found that Jesus was already dead, so that they did not break his legs. Instead, they pierced Jesus' side with a spear, which brought a flow of blood and water. John nineteen thirty one. A wealthy man 
named Joseph boldly went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Granted permission, Joseph and Nicodemus took the body, prepared it for burial, and placed Jesus in an unused tomb carved out of stone and rolled a large rock in front of the entrance, John 19:38. So as we look back on Good Friday, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus to endure torture and death on a cross. And this ask a question, how might we express gratitude to Jesus for what he did? You know, I was thinking this morning, I got up really early today, and I was thinking about how that I wonder if Jesus, you know, the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of God the Father today. And I just wonder as we often do, we look back in our past and we uh, maybe see scars on our body and we think of things. And I wonder if Jesus today, as he's sitting there on the throne, if he, if he might be looking down at the scars in his hands and if he might be looking down into this earth and he's seeing people that's hurting today and he's, he's thinking, I paid for you and it's going to be all right. And forgive me, I'm a little emotional today, but I'm just so thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus paid for me. I, I'm not worthy. I'm not fit, but none of us are really. But Jesus loved us so much. And as I was thinking about those scars and I was thinking about maybe memories that we might have, I know that, uh, uh, each of us have things in our life that, that has scarred us, but I, but I'm wondering, the scars that we have, I think about uh, some of you ladies, I think about my wife and and the scars that she bears uh, from childbirth, maybe some of the stretch marks and some of you ladies uh, try to hide those things and you try to fix them and you try to, uh, sometimes we try to, to take care of the scars and, 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 and cover them over or get rid of them. But I'm wondering what scars that we have today for things that we've done for Christ. I'm wondering... Are our knees scarred from time spent knelt before the Lord in petition and in worship? Uh, is there anything in our life that, that we're scarred that we can say that we gave something up for the Lord that maybe scarred us? Doesn't have to be in the, in the flesh, in the body. I'm not bragging on me, but I, something comes to my mind. Uh, many years ago, I can remember working at Harrison Construction Company. And I can remember walking in to the president and telling him that I have to quit. I have to leave. There's a career that's calling me. God is calling me to preach the gospel. And there's a church that we're, that we're working on that we've been pastoring for about two years now. This was two years into Rio East and, and uh, walking in and telling him that I'm leaving a career where I was very comfortable, where I thought I was going to be retiring. And, that's a scar that I can remember today, and it was a hurtful thing. But as I look back, man, that scar, it's been such a blessing. So I think as Jesus is sitting on the throne today, and as he looks at his scars, and he looks down through time, and he sees all the millions of people that have been saved, that have been washed in, in the blood, been born again and ready to go to heaven, I think that he knows that those scars are a good thing. And I think he's thankful for those scars that God allowed him, Jesus the Son, to pay the price, pay the penalty for sin and purchase you and me. I'm sorry I'm emotional this morning, but really I'm not. I'm so thankful that I can shed tears of gratitude. And I hope you can too. And I hope this little devotional helps you today on this Good Friday. Hey guys, hallelujah, Sundays are coming. I want to ask you as we go before prayer, before the Lord in prayer today to please remember Miss Sharon Bryant, uh, Derek's wife. Miss Sharon, her father passed away about 4 a.m. this morning, and uh, we want to be sure and cover that family in prayer. He was ready to go to heaven, and my goodness, what a good Friday he's having today. But it's tough on the families, tough on Sharon, her mother, and her brother. That family is hurting today because of the loss. So let's pray for them. Father, my, how we love you, how we thank you for Jesus, how we thank you for the scars, how we thank you for the penalty that he paid for our sins. Lord, thank you that you died. Thank you that you took the stripes for the healing of these old bodies. 
Thank you, God, that you cared so much that you are and were the good shepherd to lay down your life for your sheep. I'm, I'm so appreciative today that I'm one of your sheep. And Lord, I pray for Miss Sharon today. I pray for her family. Lord, it won't be long. We'll get to see those loved ones again. And I thank you, Lord, that you paid for Sharon's dad. I thank you that he's with you today. Your word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I, I appreciate those promises that we have. And God, I'm asking you, touch your people. We're still here, Lord. We're still looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we so long to be in church services together again. But God, I know that you have a perfect timing for that. I know we're going to get to celebrate again really soon. And I'm looking for Sunday, Lord. I'm looking for those days that we can hug again and, and celebrate you together again as a collective body, Lord. But until then, we'll worship you in the ways that we can. We'll worship you in the ways that you allow. So, Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that your word promises no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. We claim that. We thank you, Lord, that your word said that you rebuke the devourer for a tither's sake. We claim that. We love you so much. Appreciate what you did so much. Help us today, Lord, to please you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, I love you, church. I hope you have a wonderful Good Friday. Go with God and he'll always go with you. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.